Albert Einstein attended Richard Feynman's lecture as a graduate student, and Bill Gates was so inspired by him, called Feynman the great teacher he never had, purchased the rights to his lectures, and made them publicly available. Whether you're an educator in business or a doctor like I am, we all need to learn difficult concepts quickly and need to learn how to teach these skills to our colleagues, formally or informally, as part of our work. Most of us have learned how to learn using techniques that have proven to be rather ineffective. Video linked above and also at the end of this video, like reading a book from cover to cover like I did in medical school, highlighting the books, taking notes, and essentially regurgitating things to pass our exams. Knowledge learned this way evaporates quickly and we find ourselves unable to use what we've learned to solve life's chronic problems. This is where Feynman technique is pure genius in its simplicity and impact. We will discuss the technique in great detail and understand why it works. If you stick around to the end as bonus content, I will explain a variant of this technique I'm calling Feynman 3.0, which is perfect in the current age where students do not learn from structured textbooks and learn using a variety of other online methods. So let's start with who was Richard Feynman and his claim to fame. Richard Feynman was an American Nobel laureate who made groundbreaking contributions to the field of quantum mechanics and particle physics and pioneered the concept of nanotechnology. His invention of the Feynman diagram helped bring much needed visual clarification to the behavior of subatomic particles. In the early 1960s at Caltech, he produced a series of lectures that later became the Feynman Lectures on Physics. These lectures were aimed at students who had no previous knowledge of particle physics. Feynman was a master of taking the mystery out of complex principles. He was called the Great Explainer. Through his teaching style, he showed the world that anyone, irrespective of their IQ, was capable of explaining the most complicated things in a simple, systematic, and elegant way. The Feynman technique breaks down a concept so one just cannot learn, but how to truly understand it. It provides a framework for solving the most challenging problems, ranging from computer science to product design to psychology and evolutionary biology or medicine. When you first learn about this technique, it seems paradoxical that it suggests teaching something in order to learn it but it's proven to be amongst the most effective and inspiring learning techniques I know of, not to mention the genius in its simplicity, allowing just about anyone, regardless of what you do, to make use of it. Once we are forced to teach simply, we can no longer run away from our knowledge gaps. It forces us to start from the very beginning, like a blank page, and be specific. Feynman in his Caltech commencement address described this idea as the first principle, meaning, that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. So you have to be very careful about that. The Feynman technique is a four step process for deep learning and internalizing topics. Step one, study. The first step is simple and intuitive. All you have to do is choose a topic and start studying. Make notes and understand the material as you might normally do. Then break it down to its most basic concepts and seek to understand it as a whole. As an example, if you want to learn how to play chess, you have to start learning the rules and some basic strategies. The reason this step works is because the act of writing a topic down on a blank page, we have to take the initial step in the process and need to make it simple yet specific. Step number two, teach. Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. If you're shy, you can just teach it to an imaginary audience, but the Feynman technique works much better if you use a real person, such as a child. You will have to simplify your words, perhaps come up with analogies and stories, and be forced to speak plain terms. Because if you end up using a complex term, the follow-up questions of a child will drive you crazy. I can see the parents smiling already. I know, I go through it over the dinner table daily. Either way, you'll get feedback and will know if you're not explaining things simply and clearly. Ideally, the person you are teaching will ask you questions and probe you, trying to find holes in your knowledge base. This might feel a little uncomfortable. Many topics though are full of complex terminology, which is the reason Feynman diagrams became so valuable. His charts illustrated things that other scientists delivered long, complicated lectures about. Big words and fluffy talk cripples us from getting to the point and passing knowledge to others. We have to learn to be brief because attention spans are brief 
especially those of kids. Think of this as an elevator pitch. You have very little time to pitch your idea successfully and make an impact. This is where Feynman excelled and derived much of his pleasure as a scientist and deepened his level of understanding. This process works because if your explanation doesn't make sense, you'll get blank stares. And God forbid, if you're giving a talk in a meeting, everybody will look at their cell phone for entertainment and snub you, a phenomenon called fubbing. Step three, fill the gaps. If you got fubbed or you failed to teach the concept to a child, you will uncover some gaps in your knowledge. You will now have to go back to studying but this time, your reading is focused on filling these knowledge gaps. The aim here is to turn your knowledge gaps into your areas of strength. If you're struggling to identify your knowledge gaps, just ask yourself two questions. What parts did I struggle to explain? Which details did I miss? Highlighting knowledge gaps helps to build a cohesive story. This step makes learning an iterative process and forces you to continuously refresh your knowledge and be actively engaged, which improves long-term retention. I often find that rereading my favorite books makes the key ideas clearer and I pick up nuances that I missed the first time around. This is why there are some books I try to read every year, like Ryan Holiday's Obstacle is the Way. Finally, step four, simplify, organize, and tell a story. Now that our understanding is greatly improved, it's time to simplify the content. This step builds a cohesive understanding of the topic. To be able to cut away the fluff and explain something so clearly that even if young children with limited vocabulary can easily understand and get excited about, it's hard to do unless we have a deep mastery of the topic and fully understand how the different things interact with each other. This simplicity forces deep understanding. Rote memorization is not understanding. When we can't rely on big words that make us sound smart, we have to distill things down to their very essence. This is where true understanding takes place. Creating analogies and having good storytelling also helps here. Analogies are easier to explain and learners forget the facts but are able to hold on to the stories. For example, we probably all have the mitochondria, our powerhouse of the cell, burnt into our memories. Teaching in this way improves our communication skills, which is a very different skill set. The most knowledgeable people quite commonly are not good teachers because of their inability to simplify concepts and lack the ability to get down to meet their learners at their level. The Feynman technique promotes critical thinking and encourages us to find simple, innovative explanations for tricky ideas. When you master this technique, it translates beautifully into a critical life skill we all need. Now let's talk about the Feynman notebook method. Feynman's biographer, James Gleick, explains how Feynman operated. On the title page, Feynman wrote, notebook of things I don't know about. He worked for weeks disassembling each branch of physics and putting them back together, looking for things difficult to comprehend and for inconsistencies. He tried to find the essential tenets of every subject. When done, Gleek reports, he had a notebook of which he was especially proud. Learning is hard and requires significant amount of deep work an idea made famous by Cal Newport in his book by the same name. Dedicating a journal or a notebook to a new skill you're trying to learn forces us to stick with this hard process. Now bonus content. Let me now propose the Feynman 3.0 technique. I call it the MTF method. First, multi-sensory learning. Choose two to three good books on a topic you wanna to learn, but make the one you connect with your primary source. Read books multiple times. You will get more out of a good book every time you reread it. Listen to TED Talks and other talks by the authors on YouTube. I find that audiobooks fill knowledge gaps better for some people, and some people prefer audiobooks over paper books. Narration by an author is the best because they have a way of emphasizing keywords or points in a book that a professional narrator can't. Statistically speaking, if you wanna master any topic, read or listen to seven books on that topic, by the time you get to the seventh one, things will start to get repetitive. You're likely to even predict what the book is going to say because you're now starting to master the concept. I noticed this when I read the seventh personal finance book. Things were becoming boring, but this was when I fired my financial advisor and found the courage to invest my own money. I will link my personal finance playlist above. This idea has changed my life and I'm now not daunted by any new topic and actually find it fun to learn diverse skills and try to find unique connections to do creative things. Second, teach. 
The book Show Your Work by Austin Kleon is a great book to illustrate this idea. Once you embrace the idea of working in the public domain, you can think of yourself as a guide, someone who is a curious student, himself or herself, a philosopher, and not necessarily a master yet. This humble approach to your teaching is magnetic, and you will build an audience. I have a bias towards incorporating an audiovisual style for obvious reasons. Feedback. Read the comments from your learners. Solicit them actively from your students, ask open-minded questions, and keep your ego aside and be humble when someone points out things that you can improve on. I love the Stoic philosophy, and as Epictetus would say, it is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. It's easy to get into a competitive mindset and start comparing. Happiness in life is about progress, not perfection, developing good habits, refining your process, working sustainably, and crafting your own unique journey. Be brave to be an original. There's only one of you. I leave you with this video on learning how to learn. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.